Blue Driver Nation, how you doing? Jim and Chris back at you with a 2007 Honda Civic. Kind of an oddball repair here, but it happens a lot on this car. It's your transmission fluid pressure switches. There's one on the top of the engine and one on the bottom. If you have your tranny light on, or maybe your transmission isn't shifting, you pulled a P0745, a P0856, a P0858. It very well could be these transmission fluid pressure switches, Chris. It's two for one video. We've got one sensor on the top. It's kind of hard to get to. There's a little bit of work to get to it, cramped working spaces. There's a second one on the bottom, really easy to get to. That one only takes a couple minutes to do. Let's get to it. These are the tools you need to change your transmission pressure sensors, A and B. Your pressure switch is pretty easily accessible. It's just back here, but to get to it, we're gonna take the splash shield off. All right, to remove the clip, you take a trim removal tool or a screwdriver, pry it under the cap, you might need to work it a little bit, pry down, this releases the clip, and then you can just pull. If you're lucky, it's gonna come off like that, but you're probably gonna break a few of them, so it might be a good idea to have a spare or two ready. There you go, first broken clip. Now we've got two clips in the wheel well. Right now we're on the driver's side. One right here and one on the back there. And then finally, there's a little tab right here that's usually in that hole. You can see it popped out on its own, but you might need to wiggle it a little bit just to pop it out. Now we'll go do the other side, which is exactly the same. Here's the new pressure switch that's going on. One thing to check before you go to install it is whether it came with a crush washer or not. This is an aftermarket one, it didn't come with one. So I ran down to the Honda dealer and I got a new one there. It's a 10 millimeter crush washer. We'll include the part number in the video if you wanna grab one at the Honda parts counter. All right, we're on the driver's side of the car underneath. Here is transmission pressure switch B. We're gonna squeeze in the connector right here and then just pull or pry it off. If you're lucky, you can get a deep 22 millimeter socket that'll fit over the sensor with enough clearance right here. Ours is a little too long, so we can't fit it in there. So we're gonna use a 22 millimeter stubby wrench. All right, so we're gonna lose a little bit of transmission fluid when we take this sensor out. So I've got a rag there to catch it. I've got the new one ready, and I'm just gonna pull this one off and I'm gonna put the new one in as fast as I can. And now we torque up the sensor. It's only gonna be 14 foot pounds. You can use a deep socket if it fits or a 22 millimeter crow foot. Now we're gonna plug it back in. And that's it for switch B. Now we'll go do switch A on the top of the engine. Transmission pressure switch A is on the back of the engine hidden underneath the airbox. So we're gonna have to remove the airbox, the filter, the mass airflow sensor, all this to get to it. We'll start by disconnecting the mass airflow sensor. Then we're gonna move this little cable tray here just by prying up on the tab there. And there. Then we're gonna remove the airbox cover by disconnecting the four clips, two on the front, two on the right hand side. Just 
lift up and slide it out of the outlet duct. We'll remove our filter. Pull off our inlet ducting. You might need to wiggle it, turn it a little bit. And just poke it out of the way. We're gonna to need to remove this hard line right here. It can be a little hard to get it out when everything else is hooked up. So we're gonna disconnect the hose here. We're gonna disconnect this. We're gonna disconnect this coolant line. You might spill a little bit, so put down a rag. And then we'll be able to grab onto this line and wiggle it out. One little caution, if the US is an older car, if there's been a lot of salt exposed to it, it can be extremely rusty right around here and this coolant pipe might crack off in your hand. We'll remove the hose clamps first. Now we can just pull these hoses off. If they're stuck, just kind of twist them a little bit, pull them off. If the engine has been running recently, be careful, this coolant might be a little bit warm. And now we've got a bit of room to wiggle here, so we'll just pull it out and set it aside. Now we're going to loosen this hose clamp. You can use a 6mm socket there or a Phillips head screwdriver. Now we remove the two 10mm bolts. The first one is on the front left side near the coolant temperature sensor. The second bolt is down here it's also 10 millimeter. You're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket, a couple of extensions, maybe a U-joint, make it even easier to get that out. The air box is also held on with a rubber grommet right here on top of a stud. To get it off, you're gonna to wanna to pry up from underneath, pull straight up, you don't want to pull on one side or you could end up cracking the airbox in half, which I totally didn't do. And then you might have to put it back together with JB build plastic or something like that, which I also definitely didn't do. Then pry off the outlet going to the throttle. And now we'll set that aside. Now we're gonna remove this 10 millimeter bolt here, this 12 millimeter bolt here, and move this bracket aside. We'll put this aside. To make more room, we're gonna disconnect this cable right here and just tuck it off to the side. Here, let me give you an extra hand. Three is better than two. All right, so you don't actually need this, but we've got an inspection camera set up just so you can actually see the sensor where it's installed. It's kind of hard to see from above because it's right in the back of the engine. You can see here the connector is pretty tight up against the back of the engine. The tab you have to press in on to release it is actually facing forward. There's very little clearance, so as is, it's really hard to press in on the tab. If you've got small fingers or maybe you, a tool you could use to pry in the back, you can push in on the tab, pull the connector off, but there's an easier way to do it. I'm gonna take my 22 millimeter wrench. And I'm gonna break the torque on the sensor with the cable still attached. Now I can rotate the sensor a little bit so the tab is pointing in a sensible direction. Squeeze on it and disconnect. That's a golden sheet. Now that it's loose, we'll just remove the pressure sensor by hand. And there it is. Just double check to make sure that the crush washer came off with it. New sensor, new crush washer, and thread it in by hand.
Both sensors are torqued to 14 foot-pounds. Unfortunately, none of our sockets fit. The shallow ones don't fit over the connector. The deep ones are too long, and then once you have the torque wrench on, there's an obstruction in the back and they just don't fit. If you have one, you can use a 22 millimeter crow foot to torque it up. Unfortunately, we don't have one of those either, so we're just gonna use the human torque wrench. It's another case of do as I say and not as I do. Would you like me to make a click song? Please. Perfect. Now we clip in the connector. Then we clip in the other connector above it. Now we're gonna replace this bracket. The 12 millimeter bolt that we took off goes on the front. Torque to 104 inch pounds. Then we install this cable bracket with the 10 millimeter bolt and there's no specified torque. We're gonna put the air box back in. All right, we're gonna position this grommet over the stud and push down. We'll bolt down the airbox. And on the back. Now we're gonna put that hard line back in. Replace the hose clamps. Filter. Tighten up the hose clamp. Replace the inlet ducting. Put the cover back on. Put on our clips. Replace our cable tray. Plug in the mass airflow sensor. And we're done. All right, we're gonna install the splash shield. I've got the surviving clips. I've got a case of generic clips. I bought these online. They're not very expensive. They're worth having lying around if you're gonna do this more than once. And now we're just gonna pop back in. Reinserting all 12 clips. Reinsert the tabs on both sides in the front of the fender. And then two clips per side. Perfect. Yeah, that can be a little difficult, especially the one on the top. You gotta use that trick that we showed you in there to rotate it just a little bit. So if this saved you a ton of money, saved you a ton of time, please like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Until next time, fear, no fix.